Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues, and unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him, and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them, that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into an house. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. 
And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Chapter 4 And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth, but when the sun was up it was scorched, and because it had no root it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. 
and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Church, I said, Praise the Lord. Tonight is special because we're making a combination of our workers' training, our leaders' training, our members' transformation, and all our invitees' great power coming from heaven upon everyone in Jesus name and so as we're here you stay in your place you are a worker the word is coming to you you are a member his word is coming to you you are sick you have a problem a challenge that word coming will take away every problem and infirmity in your life in Jesus name the Lord is speaking to everyone all our workers I welcome you to such a wonderful workers training today and the word will have definite impact in, a, in our lives in Jesus name let's pray together Father, we thank you and bless your name. We thank you because of the composite, multi-purpose meeting of tonight. And we're asking, Lord, you speak to every heart. You touch every life. You transform everyone. And your power will work mightily in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious, triumphant, conquering people said, God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Matthew chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 28. Matthew 11, reading from verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the assuring word of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Redeemer, his Savior, his Healer, his Sanctifier, is the Baptizer in the Holy Ghost, in the power of God on earth and it's the power of god in your life and he says all you have to do is come come unto me and there is an initial coming you, know? you had never met the lord and there were problems in your life and then you say i need a solution the initial coming come unto me all ye that labor everyone no exception you labor, you try, and you've tried your best. Nothing worked. Tonight, miracle will work in your life. That initial coming brings you into the initial rest. It says, come unto me. Maybe somebody there is a backslider. And the Lord is saying, you have gone thinking, I'll try the world. I'll try Egypt. I'll try Assyria. You have tried, nothing worked. It says, I'm waiting for you. I will bring restoration in your life. Restoration will come tonight in Jesus' name. Here is Peter, tired, worn out, discouraged. I go a fishing. And he left the calling of God. And he left the ministry that the Lord has called him to. He's still saying to Peter and to the one that is discouraged. And the one that feels maybe there's no way anymore for ministry. Come unto me. All ye that labor. They labored all the night. They caught nothing. You will catch something today. And you are heavy laden. Heavy laden with guilt. Every lady with condemnation, every lady with the mark and the load of failure. It says, Come unto me, 
I will give you rest. Rest has come tonight. Restoration has come tonight. Renewal has come tonight. Revival has come tonight. And it is coming to you. You will taste it in Jesus' name. He gives us a promise there. I will give you rest. And as a provision from the Lord, everything that you need to bring rest or restoration, renewal, revival, reformation, he has everything. Tonight, the topic is the promise and the provision of an exceedingly glorious rest. The promise, the provision of an exceedingly glorious rest three things we're looking at number one the record of restlessness in our day in the days in which we live the dispensation in which we live the territory in which we live there is a record there is a report and there is an overflowing unrest or restlessness in these days but then number two we have the refuge of rest in our deliverer christ is the deliverer he will deliver you tonight christ is the healer he will heal you tonight christ is the provider <clears throat> he'll provide for you tonight Christ is the all in all is the solution to every problem of your life the solution has come tonight in Jesus name Amen. the refuge of rest in our deliverer number three the restfulness of the righteous and our dominion whatever a dominion over you in the past you are having dominion over that thing today in jesus name i will have dominion i will have dominion you can tell from the voice of a person who is a conqueror a person who is an overcomer a person who has overcome every problem and is so excited and he declares i am a conqueror i have dominion now say it with an excited voice you are a conqueror in jesus name let's come to number one number one is the record of restlessness in our days as we look at uh, the community all around you look around you i look around me there is a record of restlessness in our days the question is but why why do we have restlessness why is it we don't have peace of mind why that christ has to call us and he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest number one is the root of restlessness in sin if there were no sin there'll be no unrest if there were no sin there'll be no problem there'll be no storm there'll be no trouble there'll be no struggling the root of restlessness in sin number two the raging restless storms of sickness the raging restless storms of sickness you see sickness has come into the world and somebody is sleeping lying on the bed because of pain rolling here and there there is no rest there's a storm there's sickness there is pain the raging of restless storms and sickness number three the ruin of the restless in spirit the one who is restless in his spirit is running here and running there they say they are running helter skelter and they're searching where they can find rest and peace and the running has no end until all the money is spent 
until all the energy is gone until they have to sell their house until they have to sell their property so that they can have a little rest on earth the ruin it ruins their business it ruins their family it ruins all their projects because they have to give up anything in search they give up everything in search of rest but thank god after we have seen the record of the problem after we have seen the report of the problem in our days a solution has come Amen. i said a solution has come Amen. you will have rest Amen. you'll have peace Amen. and everything you have lost because your life is ruined because of running about tonight somebody help me shout tonight there will be a restoration in your life. But let's dig into the problem before we come to the solution. Number one is the root, the root of restlessness in sin. You know what Jesus said? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, reading from verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, reading from verse 15. It says, the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. Now, when it says, the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. What that means is a foolish man is a man that is looking for something, solution, where there is no solution. He's looking for rest where there is no rest. He wants peace of mind. And he goes to a source where he cannot find peace of mind. He will even pay money for that. He's looking for water in the desert. Is looking for darkness in the sun. Is looking for light in the dungeon. Is looking for the living among the dead. Is looking for peace of mind where there is devastation. We say, what are you looking for solution where there is no solution? And we say, if a person is looking for something where that thing is not, what will you talk about that person? He says, I think the man is a fool, but look at this now. The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because he knows not how to go to the city, the city of refuge and the city of praise and the city of solution and the city of redemption he knows not the way and the path into that place of resourcefulness where you will have all solution to your problem but thank god stop if you have been going that direction for a long time and you have not got what you are looking for stop turn around the solution is very near you today Christ is our solution. Christ is our restorer. And Christ is our redemption. Praise the Lord you are here tonight. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Uh, look at something here. It's Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. And I'm reading here from verse 20. Look at what it says. It says, But the wicked is like, they are like troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up mire and dirt hey, look at this the wicked are like troubled sea when it cannot rest look at this somebody is looking for happiness and is making everybody around him unhappy look at that somebody is looking for progress and is making everyone around him to fall and fail and be on their faces somebody is looking for rest and is digging into other people's families scattering their families and making them have sadness and sorrow and unrest that's a wicked man and he doesn't know that the pit is digging is digging for himself the wicked 
are like the troubled sea when it can not rest. The root of restlessness is in sin. Look at number two there. Number two there, the region of restless storms of sickness. And look at uh, this is Psalm in Psalm 107. Psalm 107, it tells us in verse 17, it tells us that the wicked people and the foolish people, they are doing and undoing themselves. They are destroying and devastating themselves and they have raging restless storms of sickness. In Psalm 107 verse 17, fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Fools because of their transgression because of their iniquities they are afflicted it says in verse 18 it says their soul abhorreth all manner of meat they draw near unto the gates of death and you know there are times when somebody has just got um, maybe a driving license and it's a child to a rich man and he is not under control of anybody, of anything. And then in the dead of the night, something just came upon him. And he says, I, I need to drive daddy's car out because daddy is asleep and mommy is asleep. And then they are not going to know I'm going out. And then he sneaks there, takes the key, enters the car, and he begins to drive. And he's not an experienced driver. And the people in the night, in the evening, some are drunk and some are in a hurry. Eventually, there's an accident. And the thing, the bag almost killed him. But now hands are broken and the feet are broken and the people good Samaritans they take him to the uh, to the hospital eventually somebody looks at the phone and then sees the phone the number of the father and says uh, Mr. So and so he says such and such your son yes and uh, well uh, something happened he had an accident how how could they have accident we closed the door and we slept. Everything was all right. Well, that's what we discover. Daddy goes to the room. The boy is not there. And then in the hospital, what happened? How did you get into this? Fools because of their foolishness. And because they think I can just do anything. They're killing themselves. And they abhor all manner of meat. They draw near to the gates of death. And the storms of this sickness come because they are ruining their own lives. But today, you know, no matter how far you have gone and no matter the source of foolishness, redemption has come today. Hey, look at number three now. Number three is uh, number three is the ruin of the restless in spirit. The ruin of the restless in spirit. When the soul cannot rest, a lot of bad things that so happen. You are thinking of that every time. And then when you hear a knock at the door, maybe that's a policeman because you're carrying guilt about because of the restlessness in your spirit in proverbs chapter 29 verse 9 proverbs chapter 29 we're reading at verse 9 it says if a wise man contended with a foolish man if a wise man contended with a foolish man whether he rage or love there's no rest there's no rest when the positive contains with the negative and then they collide together and there's an explosion there is no rest in fact it always surprised me when i was in school and the children who are there today you might be surprised it's only positive times positive that brings positive. But when you have positive times negative, 
that becomes negative you think you are positive but you are connected with a negative personality he is for satan you say you are for the savior he is for darkness you say you are for the light he is for downgrading and you say you are for uplifting he is for down 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 you say you are for up 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 and there's connection between you it says positive times negative becomes negative if you want to be positive and have a positive result in your life then there's no contention with the foolish man you are coming it reminds me of uh, one man uh, you know my hero john wesley he was going on the bridge and it's a narrow bridge and somebody was coming uh, from the other side and that man shouted and he said i never give way to a foolish man and then Wesley replied, I always do. And then he stepped back, he said, you can pass. And the fellow realized he was a foolish man because he says, he was thinking Wesley was foolish. And he said, I never give way, I never give chance to a foolish man. And Wesley said, I always do. Because he knew if I contend with a foolish man, there's no rest I'm coming to. It's some place I'm going to take. It's way. Always give way to them. Let them pass. And let your life be straightforward. And let the transformation of the Lord take place in your life from today. All the reasons, all the root, and all the rage, and all the, all the ruin of a restlessness, they're cleared out of your life in Jesus' name. How will that be? I come to point number two now. Point number two, the refuge of rest in our deliverer. The deliverer has come for you. For you in particular. I said the deliverer has come for you. Restlessness is gone from your life from today forever. Okay, I'm going to make it personal. Restlessness is gone out of my life. Out of my life. Sin out of my life. Suffering out of my life. Storms out of my life. And all the confusion out of my life. There is a refuge of rest for you in the deliverer tonight. Come back, come back now to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And we're looking at verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all, everyone, everyone, all ye that labor. Don't, don't mind anywhere you've gone. You've gone to the Habalis, you've gone to cultism, you've gone to evil, you've gone to make sacrifice. And we cannot tell in the public, it's so terrible what you used in sacrifice, looking for something in life. But it says you can come to he'll forgive you everything you've done in ignorance everything you've done in wickedness forgiveness is available for you today let the church shout a great amen come unto me then all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest when you come to this refuge now when we talk of refuge you need to understand what a refuge is in the olden days when there were wars and then people are running for security for protection in their lives they used to run inside a mighty rock that all the people that were warring against them will not discover where they were they run into the refuge generally in the in the life of the children of israel when somebody has accidentally done something uh, that the avenger of blood will be looking for him uh, and they want to take vengeance on him and kill him and finish him the lord told the children of israel to establish a city of refuge and whatever you've done as a run in that direction and you enter the city of refuge 
your life is secured and now eventually it's not a city anymore is the lord himself who has become a refuge and today is saying come unto me if satan is chasing running after you he says come unto me and enter into the refuge you are safe you are secured it will be foolish for you if satan is running after you wanting to smash your head wanting to destroy you wanting to get rid of you and you stay there and you say i don't care what will happen and you allow satan to catch you there you'll be sorry for all eternity when you spend eternity but if you are wise and I never come to the congregation of foolish everywhere I go is the congregation of wise people yeah. and tonight I am in the congregation of the wise yeah. and the wise people here tonight yeah. intelligent people here tonight yeah. and people who are who are looking for refuge are they there tonight yeah. when he says come and he says my refuge is available for you as you come that satan running after you will be blindfolded he will not see you anymore yeah. sickness will not catch up on you yeah. calamity will not catch up on you yeah. evil will not catch up on you yeah. you will live your life to the full I wish I could stretch my hands farther than this because your life will be long in the salvation of the Lord because you are wise. When he says, come unto me, and then you say, I'm here, I have come, you are going to find the refuge in Jesus' name. Now as you come, let me show a lot of things are going to happen. Even tonight, a lot of things are going to happen. Your amen is amen. Number one, number one, when you come, when you come, when you come to Christ, number one, he is the refuge. We're looking at Psalm 9, verse 9, the refuge. Psalm 9, verse 9, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the times of trouble when you come that's what christ becomes to you he is the lord your refuge and all those negative things call them pandemic call them plague call them problem call them satan call whatever you call them you are now in the refuge none of them will touch your life in jesus name number two is rest number two is rest when you come as he says come unto me then he will give Give you rest. Look at Psalm 132, Psalm 132, and we're looking at verse 14. Psalm 132, verse 14. This is my rest forever. This is my rest forever. For the people living at that time, for the people living at this time, and for the people that will continue to live, anyone that has unrest in every area, any area of their lives, they can come to the refuge and the refuge of rest. And then you will say, This is in the present tense today my rest forever here will i dwell for i have desired it when you desire the rest of the lord and then christ is saying come and it will be yours that rest will be yours in jesus name number three his righteousness is righteousness we're looking at second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says for he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him it says there is a great exchange and it's a great exchange of platform you are on the platform of losers and Christ on the platform of the winner 
he says come to my place i will take your place you were a sinner and he was sinless he said come to my place let's make an exchange i will take the body in a of your sin you were in darkness he is the light of the world he says come to my place and come to the light i'll take your darkness the power of death was working in your life he says the power of life is working in my life let's make an exchange cross over here and then i cross over there and i take all the negative things in your life away it becomes our righteousness you transfer your sin unto him when you come to him and he transfers his righteousness unto you let me tell you the implication of that when you then come before the father to pray the father will see the righteousness of Christ on you and it will be a save Christ the righteous who had never sinned was praying to the father and the prayer of the righteous will always be answered your prayer will be answered tonight because it becomes your righteousness number four is riches is riches it says come unto me when you come you know there are people you visit and as you come to them they just say hello nice wonderful to see you and then they say actually i wanted to go somewhere but thank you for coming and then he dismisses you and in a very methodical way he says uh, you can go now you were hungry when you came in you're still hungry you were thirsty when you came in you're still thirsty you were unhappy when you came in you're still unhappy nothing has changed and you go away from them empty-handed but christ is not like that I said our savior is not like that our redeemer is not like that when you come to him you must take something good away with you and today you have something good I said you have something good look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich with the riches of heaven though he was rich with the riches of glory though he was rich with the riches of eternity though he was rich yet for your sakes say for my sake say it aloud for my sake say it with assurance for my sake yet for your sakes he became poor he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich you didn't rejoice on that one through his poverty ye might become rich i say i say good afternoon brother he said good afternoon pastor i say how are you he said pastor I'll tell you the truth. I am miserable. I am poor. I am penniless. I am in nobody. I am nothing. I thought you said you were going to tell me the truth. Yes, Pastor, I'm telling you the truth. That's not the truth. Because the truth is for your sake. He, Christ, became poor that through his poverty he might be through his sorrow ye might be glad and through his death you might have life and love that life more abundantly this is the truth now i say how are you my brother you say i'm free i'm good i say sister how are you you say i am on top of the world i say tell me the truth the truth is christ gave up everything he had and gave to me and tell me pastor i have to be happy i have to be joyful i have to be rich i have to be prospered the truth is there is an exchange that through his poverty we might be rich if you have been living on the negative side on the other side of the cross i invite you come something is going to change in your life today no bad luck anymore in your life 
no sorrow anymore in your life all those struggles christ has come to simplify everything your life will be good my life is good my life is happy my life is rich all i need is provided for me for ye know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes for my sake for our sake he became poor that he through his poverty might be rich welcome to the assembly of happy victorious people in jesus name number five is rain number five is rain have you found people in life they are raining and you don't want any other person around them to rain they're like nebuchadnezzar any little problem that happens they want to kill all the people all the helpers because they could not remember his forgotten dream until daniel said don't do that you are raining let others rain you are happy let others be happy you are joyful let others be joyful you are promoted let others be promoted that's jesus christ and when you come to him he's raining and he will make you rain you will reign over every problem you will reign over every challenge you will reign over every opposing force that tries to uh, downgrade your life or destroy your life as you come today it says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest in that rest there's refuge in that rest there's total rest and in that rest we have the riches of glory in that rest there is righteousness in that rest there is reigning you will reign you will reign if you've been you know going around with a heavy load on your shoulder and it appears you're carrying the whole problems of the world on you and you're like this you're 35 and you're walking like a 70 year old 75 year old a woman or man your shoulders are down and your legs are weak and your stomach is running and there's ulcer there and there's cancer there you have name it whatever sickness you have in the world pastor everything is on me everything will clear away today a new life a new life and you will reign in your life in jesus name in romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 i'm looking at verse 17 for if by one man's offense death reigned by one man much more much more much more What's that saying? He said, when you were born into this world, the downfall and the fall and the defeat of Adam was transferred to you automatically. You didn't have to do anything. It just came automatically. But now it says much more when you come to Christ. Much more when you become a new creation. Once more, much more. When new life comes to you, it says much more they that receive the abundance of grace abundance of grace abundance of grace praise the lord i said praise the lord uh, you know the people in this world even those who want to help a little you need something uh, they are stingy this is the reason why they cannot give you everything they have because they will be in need and when they want to give you something they don't give you hundred percent of what they have because humanly speaking zero percent will remain for them they might give you one percent so that 99 percent will remain with them and if they are very generous they might give you two percent so that 98 percent will remain with them in the case of christ is not stingy in the case of christ he knows his grace is inexhaustible 
he knows his power is inexhaustible he knows his healing virtue is inexhaustible and so he gives you abundance of grace abundance of grace and tonight what you come to have is not one percent of grace i said what you come to have today is not one percent of grace full grace abundant grace overflowing grace is coming upon your life today in jesus name that's jesus that's why he said come come unto me no matter what you think you have no matter what riches you think you have and no matter what level of promotion you think you have there is much more in your life there is much more for your family there is much more for your happiness there is much more and then he says he'll give abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness and you will reign in life by him who is christ jesus i welcome you to the assembly of reigning believers you will reign i said you will reign number six is the recovery Number six is yeah, the recovery. Look at Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-five. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-five. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. In verse twenty-six, it says that they may recover themselves they may recover themselves they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil I didn't hear your amen those who are taken captive by him at his will you know the devil knew that you know that man did not have any heavenly guide any heavenly refuge any heavenly support you know somebody who is uh, in town and is like an orphan he doesn't have a father here doesn't have a mother here doesn't associate with any pastor any church it's like a road lone ranger and people have been watching him and they know that he doesn't have any connection if you take him if you bundle him and you accuse him of what he has not done and you put him in the cell nobody is going to come for him no friend nobody no contact nothing but you know if you have somebody behind you the king of kings behind you the lord of lords behind you the redeemer behind you and he has detailed you have not you don't know this but i'll tell you he has detailed an angel to be walking along with you anywhere you go and anything that is going to happen to you the angel sent an sos to heaven this is happening the person you told me to guard and to guide and to protect and to preserve this is happening immediately a legion of angels will come from heaven and all those things that will have wished away your life the life of a, you know an orphan it will scatter them it will scatter your enemies. It will start, scatter all the people that are after your life in Jesus' name. But you know, that happens when you come to Christ and he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and then there will be recovery of everything you have lost. Begin to think of what you have lost in your life tonight recovery i see the cable coming from on high i see the channel coming from on high everything you lost there's a replacement in your life there's a replacement in your life there's a replacement in your life and everything will come and your life will be beautiful your life will be wonderful and then number seven there is reassurance reassurance somebody help me shout reassurance 
reassurance look at isaiah chapter 55 reading from verse 6 isaiah chapter 55 we're reading from verse 6 seek seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near what does that mean you know when you're all alone by yourself in your house and you are praying and praying and praying although god is near but you feel as if god is far away when you come to the assembly of praying people positive people and progressive people and bible knowing bible believing people and we say let us pray he is praying you are praying the volume of prayer brings encouragement you feel like you could pray more than you could pray in isolation at home the mercy of god is near the love of god is near the grace of god is near and you just know that you know that once you open your mouth anything you ask he will give you today the lord is very near as we are all here together the pastor is here the pastors are here the members the ministers everyone we are here and we have all connection with god and he says we're two or three two hundred or three hundred three thousand or two thousand or millions when they are and they're gathered in my name i will be there in their midst he gives us reassurance he says whatever you need tonight pardon is available for you the peace of god is available for you the goodness of god is available for you every problem has a solution and that solution is coming to you tonight and you will receive in jesus name and so that's what you have when it says come unto me and you come unto him there's refuge for you there's rest for you there is also righteousness for you there are riches for you there is a rain for you a recovery for you a reassurance for you in jesus name it's mine i said it's mine now there were ten virgins five of them were foolish and five of them were wise and the wise took the oil they received everything available they knew where to get the oil and where to get the extra and they got do you know that the foolish they knew where to get the oil but they did it they knew how to get the oil but they did not you see there are people they make themselves foolish everything is available and christ says come unto me and they don't come and they don't receive and they don't possess but thank god you are wise and the wise will come and take all the need to have and there will be victory in your life we are coming to point number three point number three is the restfulness of the righteous and our dominion the three things here number one christ's example of lowliness and meekness christ's example of lowliness and meekness number two compelling exhortation to learn from the master compelling exhortation to learn from the master number three convincing evidence of link with his might link with his might i want to tell you that whoever you are and whatever you think you have the secret of progress and the secret of functionality is connection connection you know maybe you bought the latest computer in your office but there's no connection with the power source that computer means nothing 
Maybe you bought a 5G telephone, if they allow that now, and it's the top. If the, in the brand, whatever you think of, is the very best. But the problem is you have no connection with the source of power. And then that phone is useless. Maybe you are a great man, maybe you are a great woman, but you don't have link with this mighty power of the almighty God and he says come unto me and then you cheat yourself of the connection and you don't have the league with his mind whoever you are whatever you are without that connection without that link nothing will happen but thank God you are wise I say thank God you are wise and you are going to link up with his mind. And when you do that, everything is possible in your life. Amen. Everything is possible in my life. Possible. With connection, with link, everything is possible in my life. And look at number one, Christ's example of lowliness and meekness look at matthew chapter 11 reading from verse 29 matthew chapter 11 verse 29 it says take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart i am meek and lowly in heart he did that for an example so that you can follow after him you will say i'm a child of god i have come to him i'm learning of him i'm just like he is he is lowly and meek in heart and so as i come to him i am also meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls and ye shall find rest for your souls you will sleep better tonight yeah. you will think clearer from tonight yeah. you know when there's no rest in the heart when there's turbulence in the heart you're trying to think of the solution to a problem you cannot think straight or think right because of that confusion and you know the family is uh, having a problem the child is having a problem and you are having a problem and something is knocking your head when all the knocks on your head are taken away and when all the problems in your family when they are taken away and your life is free and then like the bird you can fly in the sky and there's no disturbance at all then you will be able to find all the rest all the restoration all the renewal all the reformation everything and all the recovery you need to have in your life everything will come in jesus name he has given us an example of lowliness and meekness and he wants us to follow that look at number two number two is the compelling exhortation to learn from the master the master who has never failed learn from the master the master who had never been subjected to any evil power and when satan came he defeated satan with a heavenly technical knocked down and knocked out and satan could not find his feet around him anymore that master who is master of every situation a master of the storm a master over evil spirit and master over sickness and master over every storm and when he rises up and he says peace be still peace will come at that very time he gives you a compelling exhortation to learn from him look at matthew chapter 11 verse 29 he says take my yoke upon you take my yoke upon you what does that mean maybe you don't understand that in the olden days i think they still do it in some places today they yoke two animals together and it's a wooden yoke that they put on the neck of the one on the right and the one on the left and uh, you know the, there is a plow behind them and those animals that are yoked together they're going uh, on a straight line and then the plow behind them uh, is cultivated in the land and is bringing fruit what the lord is saying is i want to be yoked with you i want you to be yoked with me because if you're weak i am strong 
if you are weak i am strong if you are not able i am able and if you cannot do that thing be yoked with me there is nothing i cannot do and both of us will plow the path of success together both of us will plow the path of progress together and you know he's never tired he's the eternal one when you are tired he says don't worry just keep on moving as i'm moving and then i will carry the higher the greater part of the load and the plow behind us will keep on plowing your farm will bear fruit your life will be a fruit. But you, not, you need to do this. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of me. You know, there are people that say, I'm learning, I'm learning. And I find a lot of those people, they're not learning. What does it mean? Learn of me. Something you need to learn about Christ he never said anything that was not written. He never said, I am done for. I'm going to fail. He never said, I cannot do this. He never opened his mouth to say anything negative about himself. He said he found what was written. And then whatever was written concerning him positive spiritual attitude positive speech action positive in his life everything that was written about him that's what he said with his mouth he find the place where it was written concerning him the spirit of the lord is upon me and he said i'll preach the gospel to the poor i'll open the eyes of the blind i'll destroy the yokes and the lives of the people he never repeated the, uh, the statement of satan he never repeated the, st the statement of an enemy you know the people that go through life everything they say what they have heard that satan said what evil spirit said what false prophet said and they say that about themselves they say i don't know what i'm going to do look at this look at this learner of christ and when you learn of christ things will be different in your life when you speak like Christ, things will be different in your life. And only the plan of God will be fulfilled in your life. The plan of Satan will not be fulfilled in your life. The plan of enemies will not be fulfilled in your life. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And now I'm coming to number three. Number three is convincing evidence of link with his might. Convincing evidence of link with his might. It says, for my yoke is easy and my body is light. Have you read that? Read it out. Let me hear you. Okay, you read, you read that as if you are at home by yourself and you are reading. Now read it exactly as in the congregation of the conquerors. Have you heard Christians that go about and everything they say it's not an easy road have you had people that say find brethren pray for me it's not an easy road have you found wives talking and they say my sisters pray for me i thought marriage is good but no i've got married now it's not an easy road have you found husband talking to another brother brother you know you need to sympathize with me marriage is not easy i thought i 
sought the will of God and see where I am today it is not easy sometimes on the mountain top and sometimes in the valley is not an easy road in fact if it is not because I know if somebody commits suicide it will go to that other place that I don't want to go forever and ever I would have taken my life it is not easy whose yoke have you taken upon yourself look at this for my yoke is easy and my body is light when you take the yoke of Christ upon you and you learn of Christ and you repeat the promises of Christ and you pray on the basis of the promises of Christ all those yokes all those evil things everything will vanish away in your life and tonight is your night I said tonight is your night my yoke is easy and my body in a is light now i come to the conclusion and as i come to the conclusion i want you to come back to matthew chapter 11 we're reading from verse 28 and to 30 matthew chapter 11 reading from verse 28 come unto me come unto me come unto me it says that's all you need to do you are a sinner come unto me you are a backslider come unto me you are a sick person come unto me you are dejected you are defiled and you are devastated come unto me it appears that life is coming to an end come unto me that's number one number two is conform unto me look at verse 29 in verse 29 take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls conform unto me once your life is aligned with the life of christ and you conform unto him and you say what you would have said if there's any challenge if there is any problem and you have learned of christ what will christ have said at this time to this issue in this situation will christ be confused never Will Christ be confounded? Never. Will Christ be crushed? Never. Will Christ think of running away? Never. Will Christ think of being impotent and helpless and hopeless? Never. Conform your life unto him and say what you would have said. I am more than a conqueror. Somebody there, I am more than a conqueror. Somebody there, I am more than a conqueror. You will conquer. Conform your speech. You conform your attitude. Conform your confession. Conform unto him. Learn of him. Number three, it's in verse 30. It says in verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my body is light. My yoke is easy and my body is light. You will enjoy the Christian life. Because you conquer with him you are yoked together you plow together and you achieve together and you progress together and you conquer every enemy every sickness every challenge you conquer together in jesus name you conquer with him he never lost any battle you will never lose any battle in your life in jesus name there is joy for your life, Amen. happiness for your life, Amen. eternal life for you, Amen. abundant life for you. Amen. Come, conform, and conquer. Come, conform, and conquer. Come, whoever you are, come, 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 conform unto him. You are sure to conquer. Amen. I will conquer. I will conquer. What are the conquerors now? Stand like a conqueror. Speak like a conqueror. Ask like a conqueror. Believe like a conqueror. You conform your life unto him. 
if there's anything that is out of conformity unto him you straighten this you straighten that and then you are conformed unto him walker conform unto him preacher pastor conform unto him and if there's anything that is not in conformity with him regulate that regularize that and say lord i bring my life i bring my utterance i bring my action i bring my behavior by your grace i bring everything in conformity unto you i learn of christ i learn of christ and then i'm yoked with him and his yoke is easy and his body is light you find the christian life uplifting you'll be walking as if you're walking on air as if you're flying through the air as the fish finds it easy to swim and the bird finds it easy to fly as you are yoked for the lord you find life is now exciting and life is now prosperous and life is now progressive link up with him and your progress will be easy will be smooth and your life will take on a new look a new light a new appearance and great will be the success of your life in the name of jesus come unto me come on to me come to him come to him and as you come he'll do it in your life he'll accomplish it in your life it will bring you to a place that you just know i didn't know the christian life the christian work the christian ministry christian profession and the christian's progress is this easy and light it'll take the body in out of your life it'll take the load out of your life come 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 conform unto him and then move on to conquer move on to conquer things are going to be different from now on he's given us the promise he's made all the necessary provision and it's yours In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. New life has come. Amen. Your body is going to be rolled away. Amen. That pressure on your life is going to be taken away. Amen. But you know, you must take that first step. Come unto me. Come unto me. All your sins will be forgiven come unto me eternal life will be yours come unto me your life will take a new face and a new picture come unto me you'll be victorious and triumphant in jesus name heads bowed and eyes closed you want to do this for the first time you have been laboring you've been sweating you've been trying your best and yet you've not been a conqueror sin has been conquering you evil habit has been conquering you and offense is piling over offense you don't even know where to go anymore you're afraid to go there because i've offended somebody there if i go there i don't know what will happen the lord is saying he wants to settle all your accounts tonight it will be settled he will forgive every sin he will take every guilt and condemnation away on the basis of just one thing 
come unto me it's about the eyes closed if you're coming with your heart with your sin with your body and you're coming to the savior to save your soul wherever you are just raise up your hand god bless you there raise up that hand raise it up very well you want him to take away the burden of your sin. You want him to take away the guilt of your sin. And he says, come unto me. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Anywhere you are inside, at the ground floor, at the gallery, at the top gallery, and outside, anywhere you are, you want the guilt, the burden, the condemnation, the judgment, the punishment of your sin to be taken away. Come unto me. Just raise up that hand. It sits you there. As you raise up your hand, tell the Lord, Lord, I come. Just tell him like that, Lord, I come. I had your invitation, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I come to you as a sinner. I come to you. I take you now as my Savior. And I confess with my mouth that now you are my Savior. Tell the Lord, Lord, I confess, I confess. And I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead and now you save my soul. You forgive my sin. And you take the punishment of my sin away. You take the pollution of my sin away. You break the power of sin out of my life. I come. I come. I come. I believe you have accepted me. You invited me. You wouldn't invite me if you were not going to accept me. I come, I am accepted. I am forgiven. I am transformed. I am now a child of God. The Lord confirmed that in every life in Jesus' name. Those who are raising up their hands, keep their hands up. Let me pray for you, Father in the name of jesus i pray for all these who have responded to your invitation and they have come to you as sinners take all their sins away in jesus name give them pardon forgiveness freedom eternal life and the joy of salvation in jesus name give them peace of mind that all the confusion in the heart of the sinner, everything is taken off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the believing church of God said, It has happened. You came, he has received you and accepted you. Keep up your hands so that our ushers, our leaders, our ministers will see you. Our members of the choir, they'll see you there. And then they'll give you the card and you'll feel that very quickly. After feeling that, don't take it back home with you. Give it back to those who gave it to you. And now remember, remember that all sicknesses are going to be taken away. Storms of life are going to become calm. And you will go out of this place totally free, completely free in Jesus' name. And then after the service, you conform your language to his language. You conform your speech to his speech. You conform your life to his life you conform your love to his love you come you conform and then you conquer learn of me and then what you learn of him what you learn of christ that is what you say and that is how you live and your life is new from tonight fresh life fresh life renewed life victorious life powerful life overcoming life it is done now uh, our leaders who are distributing those cards 
and our brethren are filling the card we want to know when you're through so that the rest of us that come conform will conquer Amen. it's time to conquer sickness Amen. it's time to bring in a miracle Amen. miracle in your life Amen. power in your life Amen. authority in your life Amen. leaders let's know if you're through in all the various locations those who raise up their hands take the cards and you know fill in uh, the information online uh, you've just given your life to the lord send your name send your address to the uh, to the numbers you see there on the screen uh, because now you've come you're confirming your life to that of christ anywhere you are whatever circumstance or situation come conform uh, conquer I wish through while we're waiting uh, just keep on talking to the Lord and saying uh, I conform my life my speech my expectation to that of Christ my life is a conquering life from today in Jesus name we pray now you surrender every sickness in your life to Christ to whom you have come. That's not your property. It doesn't belong to you. That infirmity, that disease, that oppression, that evil thing that is loaded on your life, your head, your tummy, your bones, any part of your life, those sicknesses are not yours anymore. Yeah. They are not mine. They are not mine. They are not mine. I come to Christ. Say that. I come to Christ. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my redeemer. He, he redeems me from every curse. The curse is not mine. And then as I conform unto him, I have his righteousness. I have his health. I have his might. And then life has become easy life has become light i begin afresh today and i'm going to move up without sickness without sin without spiritual attack without any burden i am free Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I bring all your people before you. And I'm asking, oh Lord, anyone that brought any sickness here, I command you sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. And any ulcer there, any pain there, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. Paralysis, lameless, I command you, get out in Jesus' name. Stroke, you are healed in Jesus' name broken bones be joined together in Jesus name 
and Lord every yoke every cause is broken and taken away set everyone free they have come they will conform their lives to you they will conquer every foe you go out of this place as conquerors as overcomers healed delivered set free and you go your way rejoicing with testimony confirm it lord in every life we thank you because we know it is done in jesus name we pray Put your hands together for Jesus.